Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Let me get you straight here. There you go. How's everybody today? I hope well. I'm wearing colors. You'll see why. It has something to do with what we're reading about. But before I start reading, let's go with our riddle. What do you give a sick bird? Now today I'm reading about the Grand Canyon, one of our landforms we'll study. Now, the colors kind of match the color to the Grand Canyon. That's why I wore the scarf. So it's by Jason Chin, and it's has two award winners. It's an honorable honor book for the Caldecott Award, and it is a Robert Siebert honor book as well. So it must be really good. The illustrations are amazing, so you might want to take a look. Grand Canyon by Jason Chin. Grand Canyon is one of the largest canyons in the world. It is 277 miles long, as much as 18 miles wide, and more than a mile deep in places. It's much more than just a big hole in the ground. Isn't that beautiful? It's home to an astonishing variety of plants and animals. The canyon is much higher, hotter and drier at the bottom than at the top. Because of this, different groups of plants and animals or ecological communities are found at different elevations in the canyon. The hottest part of the canyon is at the very bottom, a thousand foot deep chasm called the Inner Gorge. The Inner Gorge may be the hottest part of the canyon, but there are oases in this desert. Here on the side it has the different levels here, the Boreal Forest, the Ponderosa Pine Forest, sorry, the Pinion Juniper Woodland, the Desert Scrub down here, the Riparian along the river streams at all elevations. Creeks bringing life-giving water into the gorge and a wide variety of species live along their banks, including frogs, dragonflies, mule deer, and the endangered southwestern willow flyer catcher. flycatcher. Many of these creatures are permanent residents that rely on running water for their survival, while others are visitors drawn here by their thirst. Eventually, every creek in the canyon flows into the largest stream of all. has all the animals around the outside you can find there. The Colorado River, the Colorado runs the entire length of the Grand Canyon, continually washing sediment away and slowly deepening its channel. It's been cutting into the land for over five million years slicing through layer after layer of rock. Today, it's cutting into the Vishnu basement rocks. These rocks are part of the continental basement, the bottommost layer of the rock on, continent, on the continent. Here's all the layers of the rocks. The basement rocks are the oldest in the canyon, as much as 1.84 billion years old. Many younger rock layers are stacked on top of them. If you would hike out of the canyon, you'll pass younger and younger layers as you climb, as if walking through time. Above the basement layer, you'll reach the Grand Canyon supergroup. Here you'll find ripple marks preserved in stone. Clues like these tell us what this place was like when the rock formed. They're like windows. So here is the basement rocks, and it goes all the way up to the different kinds of rock layers. To the past. Ooh, there's a little hole here. It's supposed to be on purpose. See where my finger is? This is Grand Canyon 1.2 billion years ago when the only living things on earth were microbes, such as algae and bacteria. Although they were too small to see, these primitive organisms filled the oceans and were some of the earliest, earliest life forms on earth. The mud from this tidal flat eventually transformed into a layer of solid rock, and these ripple marks were preserved in the process. They are now part of the Grand Canyon supergroup. See the ripple marks? They became fossilized. 
and you can see them in the walls. I know. After climbing out of the inner gorge, you'll find yourself on a broad sun-baked sun slope. The plants and animals here are well adapted for life with little water. Black-throated sparrows can go for long periods without taking a drink. Many creatures sleep during the heat of the day. Pocket mice forage at night and are preyed on by owls and rattlesnakes who are adapted for hunting in the dark. <coughs> oh, Amazon, I'll be right back. <coughs> That's why they're my guard dogs. I always know when someone's here. Okay. The animals are living in the rock glare called the Bright Angel Shale, which is formed more than 200 million years ago. After the Grand Canyon Supergroup trilobite fossils in the rocks tell us that this spot, and that, but here once again, all the animals that live around, so that this spot, Once lay once beneath the sea. This is the Grand Canyon 515 million years ago. By this time in Earth's history, many multicellular plants and animals had evolved. Soft-bodied jellyfish floated above clam-like brachiopods and tiny hyaliths, some of the first creatures on Earth, with shells. Trilobites, the first animals known to have had eyes, roamed the seafloor. Around then, worm-like creatures burrowed in the sediment. Sediment that eventually transformed into bright angel shale. Shale is spelled S-H-A-L-E. Kind of sounds like the other shell, but it's not a shell. It's kind of rock. And these down here are the trilobites. Towering up over the bright angel shale is a massive cliff called the Redwall Limestone. The Redwall has many inaccessible caves that provide nesting spots for one of the rarest birds in the world, the California condor. With a nine foot wingspan and weighing as much as 23 pounds, the condor is the largest land bird in North America. Condors are vultures and during Ice Age, they fed on the carcasses of mega beasts like giant ground sloths. Since then, their population has declined due to changes in climate and human activity, and now they're close to extinction. Don't want that to happen. They're ugly birds, but they're protected. We need to protect them. We don't want them to die. Above the Redwall Cliff is a slope of rust red rock. The climate here is not hot and dry as it is below, and pinyon pines and Utah junipers are common. Many creatures such as squirrels, chipmunks, and wood rats eat their seeds. These small rodents are preyed on by gophers, snakes, and coyotes. At the top of the slope is the rock layer called the Hermit Found Formation. Fossils in the Hermit tell us that long ago this spot was home to... Let's see. Large dragon spy flies with eight inch wingspans. This is a Grand Canyon 280 million years ago. By this time, life was flourishing on land and trees and ferns, fish, amphibians, and reptiles had evolved. The sea had retreated from the region and rivers flowed across the landscape. Seed ferns and conifers grew along their banks and amphibians left their tracks in the mud. The mud that eventually transformed into the hermit formation. I like the way they keep going back and then into the present, what it was like in the time that made that rock. About the red slopes of the Hermit are pale 350 foot cliffs. Bighorn sheep easily navigate their narrow edges with specially adapted hooves. In fall mating season, males compete for dominance by smashing into each other with their battering ram horns. These cliffs have been carved from coconut sandstone. Fossil footprints in the rock tell us that this spot 275 million years ago, what do you think it was like 275 million years ago? That an early wet reptile walked across a huge windswept dunes. With little water, life here would have been difficult but the desert wasn't entirely barren. Among the other species that called it home were scorpions, millipedes, and spiders. As the desert wind whipped across the landscape, sand piled up in the thin layers. Today, those layers are preserved in the Kokono sandstone as thin angled surfaces called crossbeds. 
see the footprints going across. Another hold. Go back. As you approach the rim of the canyon, the climate becomes cooler and more moist. Vegetation on the sloping Toroi formation is more dense than below. Before exiting the canyon, however, there is one more layer to scale, the Kaibab Formation. The Kaibab's limestone cliffs are full of marine fossils that tell us about life here 270 million years ago. What do you think it was like 270 million years ago? If there are marine fossils, marine means from the water. When the ocean, again, covered the land. Fossils in the Kaibab formation tell of a complex ecosystem. The seafloor was home, home to sea lilies and bryozones, sponges and coral. Trilobites and brachiopods lived alongside them. While nautilids, as many as 40 species of shark, patrolled the water above them. Many of these creatures, such as coral and brachiopods, had hard shells. When they died, their shells piled up on the seafloor and eventually transformed into limestone of the Kaibab formation. It's interesting. So limestone is actually dead shells and bones. If you ascend from the Colorado River to the south rim of the Grand Canyon, you will have climbed nearly 5,000 feet and pass through three distinct habitats. Above the rim, you'll find one more. The Ponderosa Pine Forest is home to tassel-eared squirrels, deer and elk. Bobcats, coyotes, hawks hunt here, as well as top predators in the canyon, mountain lions. And once again, it has all the animals that live here. I love this book. It's beautiful. Ooh. Okay, that's the grandest canyon on earth. Look at this page. This page is off. It folds out. Isn't it beautiful? Kind of makes you feel like you're standing on the edge. You ever been to the Grand Canyon? Been a couple times. I love to go. Now, the rest of the pages just give you some information about the grandest canyon, human history there. Um, ecology, what kind of animals and plants live there. Geology, what kind of rocks are there. How canyons are formed. The story in rocks, how the different layers of rocks tell the story of the Grand Canyon. A note from the author. As I was researching this book, I tried to imagine how the region changed over time and was bit by bit by the geology bug. Not really bit, but when you say you're bit by some sort of bug, it means he was really excited to learn about geology. As my advisor, Wayne Rennie, put it, it fascinates me that I can look at a rock and with basic understanding of geology know something about its past. Now when I look at rocks, I can't help but trying to imagine their history, where they came from, and the story of how they formed. This book is my tribute to the canyon and also to the power of the imagination. After all, it's imagination that makes both science and art possible. I hope this book captures my reader's imaginations just as the Grand Canyon has captured mine. Exciting. Beautiful book. I love the Grand Canyon. One day I want to go down into, it's called Havasu Falls, where it's beautiful blue water. I try to do that soon if we can travel soon. Okay. My hair is to go. <laughs> Answer to our riddle. What, what do you do to a sick bird? Well, you give it a tweet, Matt. Get it? Tweet, Matt. Silly. Okay, you ready for some fun? We're going to do some erosion experiments. I'll see you in a little bit. I miss you. I love you. Bye-bye. Okay, hi. Welcome back, boys and girls. You ready for our experiment? Now, this one's about erosion, and it involves candy. Yum. So, you'll need some candy, three different kinds. Now, you need a soft candy. I'm using gummy bears. Kind of soft, I'm using Skittles. Soft is gonna be sedimentary. Kind of soft, and that's the softest kind of rock. Sedimentary is the middle kind, I'm sorry. Igneous is the middle kind, kind of hard, kind of soft, like Skittles. And then the hard rock, metamorphic. Those are the three different kinds of rock. You also need two jars, some water, and some bowls to dump it out in. Now, what I'm gonna do is put a gummy bear in each jar. 
one in this jar, one in this jar. Then I'll do a couple of Skittles in each jar. I'm gonna do yellow, stick with yellow. Those, that's the sedimentary and the igneous rock. Now for the metamorphic, the hard rock, I'm gonna use Jolly Ranchers. One in one jar. Mm, can even hear it, it sounds hard. And one in the other jar, if I can get it open. Okay, so now you'll see, both of my jars have two gummy bears, I mean one gummy bear, two Skittles, and a Jolly Rancher. I'm gonna pour the same amount of water over them. About half a jar. Let's see if it's about the same amount. Oh, pretty good. Okay, then I put a lid on both of them. Make sure the lid is tight. Now, if you remember from reading about the Grand Canyon, most of it was called by, caused, the formation was caused by erosion from water. Now we don't have five million years to sit around and see what would happen. So we're gonna kind of make our own erosion happen in water. Now, now the control candy. I'm not going to do anything to it, I'm just gonna put it to the side. If you look kind of closely, there is some things happening to it. Kind of like our Skittles experiment. Now the other one, in the Grand Canyon, the water just doesn't sit there, it moves. So we're gonna move it. I'm gonna sh start shaking my candy. I'm gonna do it for about two minutes. I'm gonna stop the camera and I'll be back in two minutes. Oop, got me, I was eating one of the extras. Okay, it's been two minutes. Now, what do you think happened? I have one jar where I didn't shake it at all, like water standing still, and the other dark jar I shook for two minutes. Make a guess, an educated guess. Which one do you think is gonna have a change? Are they both gonna have a change? What kind of change do you think is gonna happen? Here's my two jars. Which one do you think I shook and which one didn't I shake? You're right, I didn't shake this one and I did shake this one. You can't see it, but I think I, Athena agrees with me. Now, I'm gonna tilt the camera down and I'm gonna put them in the bowl and we'll compare and see what happened. First I'm gonna let's tilt this down a little bit. Eh, actually smells really yummy. Okay, this is the one I didn't shake and Jolly Rancher stuck to the bottom. Okay, and this is the one I did shake. <laughs> Oops! Okay. Okay, let's compare. I guess I can come up here now. Let's compare the sedimentary ones first. Okay, shaken, not shaken. Oh, sounds like something else. Okay, so this is the shaken gummy bear, not shaken. Oh, the not shaken one is bigger. Parts of the one of the shaken gummy bear came up and slipped out. Those were the sedimentary rocks. Then we had the Skittles, which were like the igneous rocks. Not shaken, shake it, shaken. Okay, we can only use one because one's on the floor. Look how much smaller the shaken one became. Thinner too, if you look at it side by side. Finally, the Jolly Rancher, the metamorphic rock. Not shaken, shaken. That's what erosion does. It takes off little pieces and makes it smaller. And now I can eat it because it was just in water. I miss you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, boys.